So today we're going to harvest some comfrey. I'm going to make some comfrey tea and harvest one patch of comfrey that I've got. I've got a few around the place and some are bigger than the others. This is a bigger of the group I've got. Um, I've got it dotted around the property uh, but I had purchased this particular hybrid um, because it has it's seedless it's, it's infertile it can't spread and become a weed everywhere and so um, I've got this variety and I purchased some roots for myself planted them a few months back um, it's probably about five months so I'd have to look it up but I'll, I'll write it write it on the video and um, now I've got these beautiful plants that I can now harvest myself and split up the roots and grow some more. And it's a highly valuable plant, so I really want to make more of them. And I've got someone that I have promised some root cuttings of, so I'm going to harvest this, make the tea, use the leaves and make some more plants of it today. So join me now and we'll I'll show you the process. So I've got this new garden here. The bed is made out of banana trees and not a lot else. So it's it's a bed at the front end of our chook pen and I've done a, like a hugel culture set up here but didn't actually get to fill it up too deeply. So it's directly on the soil with the bananas with a bit of compost in there, but not much at all. It's more, um, there was more mulch in there and then I've planted into pockets of soil within there. Now I planted a few months ago, not that long ago, comfrey and this is it here. It's just about ready to harvest. I mean, it's well and truly ready to harvest. I'm about to harvest all this. Um, you can see how big it is. I've got a big boot there. Four, about four meters down. So it's able to bring up nutrients and minerals and things that most plants just can't access. Brings it up into the leaves and it must do something to the soil around it because right beside this comfrey, you'll see my sorrel. Now you see the difference in size in the sorrel from what, what's near the comfrey, it's pretty much as tall as the comfrey, to as it goes away from the comfrey. And see the plant there compared to over there? And as, as it's moved closer to the comfrey, they are huge. Not only are they bigger, I've harvested from these sorrel just here about seven or eight times and I haven't really touched what's so I just want to show you that there's lots of ways to use comfrey I share them in my videos on my channel uh, on YouTube but uh, that is just I wanted to show you visually the difference with beautiful comfrey growing in your garden I'm going to chop it right back because you can it's not going to hurt the plant at all we are currently at the end of our summer entering, well, we, we have just entered autumn. To give you an idea, the time of year that I'm doing this. Uh, some gardeners have already done this a few weeks ago at the end of summer. My comfrey have not flowered. When it flowers, it's got a light purple flower. Um, I could have let it go and flower, which I will get some of the other, other plants that I've got, but for now I'll just collect these. Okay, so I'll also show you the difference to plants that it makes having comfrey growing next to it. So I've cleared that space, it's grown in a very small section right against some banana. Um, trees here, a little bit of soil just in there. I'll, I can see a root there, quite a strong root. I'll dig it out, I will leave some of the roots in there and it'll grow again but I'll have all these plants. Now I have to be careful 
because there is a tree there is a plant here I don't want to upset it's a bit tricky trying to do this now that I've got other things growing near it now I think that's what's that I've got to work out what's what here and where the plant actually is there it is it's not too bad going to come out easier than I thought. It's attached itself, it's grown around around this bit of wood here. Look at that. And attached itself. Or well, gone around it really. Look at that. There's the root. Now there's a the tap roots going down I think. Okay. Okay, so I've broken broken a couple off. They'll grow back here. So I'll have plenty of plants in there. Is that a lemon? A lemon that hasn't decomposed. I'll put that back in there. Okay, so this is what we've got. give you a good look at what I'm playing with here so this started from a piece about that big it's about this my finger piece that big but I've got all this extra roots now so I can cut them to the plant pretty close like that I'm going to leave these. Well, I'll cut that off there too. Oh, there's a centipede. Hang on. They're great for the garden, but they can bite. Is it off? Yes. Oh, I think I disrupted its home. So, so that plant, I'll replant somewhere else. Then I've got all these pieces. And I can cut these up. I could probably cut these into three. Three, well, that piece into one, two, three, four, maybe four or five pieces. Three, six, five. I'll probably get ten. Ten pieces out of that. Okay, so I moved them into the shade pretty quick, smart. Um, this morning when I was planning on doing this, it wasn't that um, hot. So... So in the, they're in the shade. I got 15, 15 pieces. Now when I bought them, they were um, pieces like perhaps that, perhaps a little bit smaller in size than that. And um, I started with about eight plants. I've, I have given some, I shared some when I got them. Um, but this one plant has given me, including that, 15 new plants. Plus I've probably got three growing at least in that spot from where I pulled it out instead of trying to dig it up properly. So just letting it snap off under the ground, those pieces will grow back. So that's a pretty good um, multiplication on what I started with. So I'll show you how I plant these and also there's a few different ways you can use the confit leaves and I'll show them if you watch the video to the end you'll see a few different ways you can use confit as a fertilizer in your garden. Whatever you do keep your roots moist don't let them dry out and plant them as soon as you can. It is a very robust plant and it can be neglected, but you're going to have a happier, healthier, bigger plant if you meet its needs. And they're happy 
full sun or semi shade so they don't mind being right under trees like this at all okay with concrete tea it's pretty simple just get a bucket and just cut the leaves up a bit watching your fingers scissors are easier than using secateurs so this is a bit of a slow way of cutting it oh. in there It'll just help the, the fermenting process a little bit if they're cut put them all in your bucket I'm going to fill it with water and then put the lid on and, and keep it for about three weeks before I can use it as a concentrated Weed tea. You can hear the pump because that's off our rain water, and that's what is preferable. If you use tap water, let the water gas off. For 24 hours for the chlorine to evaporate and then use that and I'm going to put this on tight when I'm not holding the camera and put it somewhere where it can't be knocked over if you've got a few leaves and you don't want to wait for the comfrey tea you can make a shake and apply it to your garden it's pretty easy you just again Try and use filtered water or rainwater if you can. Um, and it's not absolutely important. But fill your jug up, three quarts full. Put a couple of leaves in. I use two big leaves for these shakes. And process it. It'll give you about eight cups. And you can apply that to the base of your plants. So don't try to make sure that you don't put it directly on the leaves of the plants. I don't know if that hurts them or not, but I wouldn't. Um, it could attract bugs uh, to, to the leaves. Um, so I would put it at the base. You can choose to put a little bit of mulch over top if you want, but I pretty much just pour it on and let the soil do its work and the worms do their work. This day I had a few leaves that I had trimmed back when I was demonstrating on another video, a uh, different method, again, of applying comfrey to the garden. And using two at a time, I made three batches to use for some plants that were struggling. Uh, it's just a quick way to get it decomposing down in the soil. So um, you might want to try that method. So planting in pots is pretty simple. If you're not ready to plant it somewhere, you put in plant pots first, but they can't stay in there too long because they do grow, as you saw. They, um, they grow quite well. And one thing to consider, if you don't have a lot of garden space, you can grow them outside your garden and don't take up your garden real estate with comfrey in your vegetable garden. Okay, lightly packing down the potting mix. All you do is you place your root like that on its side. So you're not pla putting it in like a cutting. Plant it, plant it on its side. Cover it with soil or potting mix. And water it in. So I only just I'm only just covering it. I don't need to cover it a lot. 
and that's all you do. And some of these I'll plant beside my garden. And don't forget to label them or you'll think that something has died. <laughs> you won't realise you've got something in there and you may forget. Now these pots probably pay for my comfrey and this is why you can subsidize your plants and it can help help you if you sell a few here and there help you pay for your plants and get your garden going even if you're in a tight spot there's ways around it Okay, so this is a garden bed, but this is going to be garden too, but at the back of this bit, I'm going to put some comfrey. I forgot to bring my tools. I'm going down to the soil. And if you just got regular garden soil, that's fine. I just don't have much. So I'm using the potting mix. I'll put a nice solid root at the back here and hope an animal doesn't dig it up. And I've got to remember to mark it. Not with that, I'll come back and do that. Now we have this old guava tree here that has been neglected for a lot of years. I've started looking after it now that I'm home with the garden. And um, it's been a really faithful tree. <laughs> it endures lots of pest pressure, um, but I'm gonna give it some comfrey too. As a thank you. Now what's that? That's a weed, I think. I think that's a weed. I've planted so many little seeds in here that haven't done very well. I'm not sure what's in here anymore. I'm just going to scratch the surface. And I might give it a couple here. And hopefully the comfrey will kick out this spider plant that keeps on trying to grow back. So I'll give it a potting mix over that. And some mulch. And water. And when you're not quite ready to plant or you're gifting some root cuttings, Keep them moist. I use two serviettes or um, paper towel, like a double layer paper towel. Wet it, fold them into a, like a little envelope and keep them nice and moist. You can put them in plastic bags after that, but you've got to watch it doesn't get mouldy. So I'm a little bit cautious about doing that. But if you think you're gonna dry it out, maybe an open plastic bag. So I hope that inspires you to grow comfrey. Make sure you check your varieties when you're purchasing them. But I'm sure your garden will much appreciate you for adding that if you don't already have it. I love it if you would like and subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notifications so I can see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye for now.